Hi friends, uh, today I am going to discuss about uh, anti-tubercular therapy induced hepatitis or hepatotoxicity. This is the most common adverse reaction of significance. Generally, patients will present with, after starting ATT, patient will present with symptoms of uh, dark urine, loss of appetite, nausea, yellowish discoloration of eyes, etc. So, we have to assess baseline LFT before starting ATT. And 20% of patients on ATT who are drug susceptible uh, will have increased uh, SGOT. It is a liver enzyme and it increases up to three times upper limit of the normal. And they, these patients are without symptoms and it is of no consequence. We can continue ATT in them. And whereas in others, uh, there will be symptomatic hepatitis like uh, earlier we described about dark urine, loss of appetite, nausea and five to marked increase in uh, liver enzymes and increase in bilirubin levels. Here we have to stop ATT, wait until LFT becomes normal and again, then again start ATT. Uh, the most hepatotoxic uh, drugs are in the order isoniazide, pyrazinamide, rifampicin. And here is a small thing that checklist before starting ATT. Uh, we have to check CBP, LFT, RFT, that means creatinine and pedurea nitrogen, uric acid, and audiometry. Why? Because rifampicin may cause autoimmune thrombocytopenia. For that, platelets count is important before starting ATP. And LFT, the baseline LFT uh, should be seen whether the patient is already having some hepatitis or some liver disease. And creatine is also should be monitored. Uric acid, why? Because pyrazinamide can cause hyperuricemia and if the patient presents with gouty arthritis after starting pyrazinamide, we should stop pyrazinamide. Streptomycin is no longer considered as a first-line drug, but if you are starting streptomycin, audiometry should be done before starting ATT. And I am telling the doses, dosage of ATT drugs, isoniazide, 5 mg per kg, and maximum is 300 mg per day. Rifampicin is 10 mg per kg, maximum 600 mg per day. Azoniazide can cause peripheral neuropathy. For that, we, we have to give pyridoxine supplement to the patient. And it is the most hepatotoxic drug also. Rifampicin can cause autoimmune thrombocytopenia and orange colored urine. Pyrazinamide dosage is 25 mg per kg and maximum is 2 grams per day. It can cause hyperuricemia and arthralgia. It can, these can be treated with aspirin, acetyl salicylic acid. But if the patient develops goatee arthritis, we have to stop pyrazinamide. And the dose for ethambutol is 15 mg per kg and the side effect for this is optic neuritis. And this is a, a based on a study. The symptoms of if the symptoms of hepatotoxicity presents occurs within ten days of ADT, most common culprit is rifampicin. And if the symptoms of hepatotoxicity occurs after the end of second week, the culprit most likely is isoniazide. And if after three weeks, it is pyrazinamide. And after stopping all, all the drugs, after seeing the uh, uh, patient with uh, hepatotoxicity or increased uh, bilirubin levels with symptoms, we, we need to stop all the ATT drugs. And isoniazide is the first drug to be reinitiated, followed by rifampicin and then pyrazina. So start the patient on isoniazide and with the low doses and watch him for one to two weeks. If he is stable, after two weeks add 
rifampicin and the patient if stable add pyrazinamide after 4 weeks if the recurrence of uh, liver involved uh, hepatotoxicity is considered we have to withhold the newly added agent yeah this is about a little bit about uh, anti tubercular therapy uh, most commonly uh, anti tubercular therapy induced hepatotoxicity hope you like it, like the video thanks for watching have a nice day